Six days after Matthew Perry was discovered dead in the hot tub at his Los Angeles home, a private burial was held for him on Friday. Fifty-four was his age. At Los Angeles's Forest Lawn Cemetery, the actor was laid to rest following a straightforward one-hour funeral. Along with his father John Perry, 82, his weeping mother Suzanne Morrison, 84, and stepfather Keith, a writer for Dateline, were present at the private celebration. Friends co-stars David Schwimmer, 57, Jennifer Aniston, 54, Lisa Kudrow, 60, and Courtney Cox, 59, arrived as a quartet, all solemn and clad in black suits, ready to bid Perry farewell. An observer claimed that Miss Aniston was among the first to arrive. She avoided social interaction. This is a well-known meeting. The final resting place of numerous Hollywood celebrities, including Carrie Fisher, Bette Davis, Stan Laurel, Buster Keaton, Michael Hutchins of INX S, and Anne Hetcher, is the cemetery, which is located across from Warner Bros. Studios, the location where Friends was filmed for ten seasons. The song Don't Give Up by Peter Gabriel, which had the lines no fight left, or so it seems. I am a man whose dreams have all deserted. I've changed my face, I've changed my name, but no one wants you when you lose, was performed as the service came to a close. There was not a single dry eye in the room, according to an observer. Both laughter and tears were abundant. Only intimate friends and relatives conversed. Perry was buried in a black wooden coffin in a private ceremony for his family, exclusively following the service. Following the service, large groups of mourners dressed in black gathered outside the church. A few were observed giving each other comfort and an embrace. In order to protect their eyes from the intense Californian sun, many wore dark shades. It's unknown if Perry asked to say his last goodbyes at the church or if his family picked it for him. It's also unclear if a later, more well-attended memorial service will be organized in his honor. Aniston released a statement on Monday expressing her astonishment and sadness, along with that of the rest of the ensemble, which included Courtney Cox, Matt LeBlanc, David Schwimmer, and Lisa Curdo. The loss of Matthew has devastated us all so completely. We were not just co-workers on the show. The ensemble declared in a statement on Monday, We are a family. We're going to take a moment to grieve and digest this unbelievable loss since there is so much to say. We will provide additional information later as we are able. For the time being, our love and thoughts are with Matty's friends, family, and everyone who loved him everywhere. Although Perry's cause of death is still unknown, Preliminary toxicology testing indicated that fentanyl and meth were not present in his system at the time of his drowning. Perry had always been honest about his battles with alcoholism and drugs. According to a TMZ article, Perry's system did not include any common narcotics when first tested. However, additional thorough testing is being conducted to determine whether the adored actor was taking any prescription drugs. Upon their arrival at Perry's residence, detectives discovered prescription medication in appropriately labelled storage bottles rather than any illegal substances. Perry claimed in his 2022 book Friends, Lovers and the Big Terrible Thing that following his colon explosion in 2018, he was prescribed opiates, but he felt they were insufficient to manage his agony. As a result, he turned to street vendors to get Oxycontin that might have been spiked with fentanyl. He added, The street pills were about $1.75 each, so I was giving the guy $3,000 at a time, several times a week. The Los Angeles County coroner has postponed releasing the cause of death following an initial inquiry. This might take several weeks. According to many who knew him, Perry was sober and clean when he passed away. In the opening of his best-selling autobiography, Perry writes, Hello, I'm Matthew, though you may know me by another name. My pals refer to me as Matty, and I ought to be gone. 
Britney Spears' memoir was displaced as the top seller on Amazon on Sunday by Perry's book. Few people knew that Perry battled addiction and a strong desire to satisfy viewers when he was filming the 90s sitcom hit Friends. Pals was really important. I could not risk that. The script was fantastic. My co-actors were wonderful. The scripts were amazing. In his memoir, he stated, I loved everything about the show, but I was struggling with my addictions, which only added to my sense of shame. I kept my secret from everyone. If the live audience didn't laugh, I felt like I was going to die, and that's definitely not healthy. However, there were instances when I could recite a line, and the audience would not laugh, and at other times I would perspire and have convulsions. Perry wrote, I would freak out if I didn't get the laugh I was supposed to. That's how I felt every single night. I was in a poor place because of this pressure. Only one of the six persons who made the show, whom I also knew, was ill. In his autobiography, he related how co-star Jennifer Aniston asked him whether he was drunk during the shoot. I know you're drinking, he recalled her saying to him previously. We smell it, she uttered in a manner that Perry described as kind of weird but loving, and the pronoun we struck me as hard as a sledgehammer. A participant in Perry's recovery program claimed that Matty wasn't drinking. He played a significant role in our AA group. In addition to working with a few newbies, he was attending and speaking at meetings. Both he and his sponsor were sponsors. He appeared to be in good health. The insider stated that the actor had recently shown interest in using public speaking engagements to share his story and had been concentrating on supporting others who were suffering addiction. Matty expressed his desire to revisit colleges and give speeches on alcoholism. It was his gift to us. The source continued. He had such a gift for speaking and inspiring others. It was crucial that he communicate his don't-give-up message to the younger generation. Those were words he truly lived by. Even at meetings, he never failed to make everyone laugh. However, he was also spiritual, as opposed to religious. He knew this was his mission, and he lived it. To lend a hand and inspire hope to others. Matty never gave up, and for that reason, he will always be the embodiment of hope. He changed his life, and became a great assistance to many others in the program, more than his imagination allowed. In an interview, the woman who had lunch with the late actor the day before he passed away said he was so dedicated to his sobriety that he was hesitant to order a Diet Coke because caffeine may be an addictive drug. Athena Crosby, a 25-year-old model and entertainment reporter, added that Perry had a lot of ideas for the future. In his ideal world, Zac Efron would play the lead in an autobiographical film about his life, in which he would also appear in a cameo as a therapist. I don't think he had any desire to get back into drugs and booze, the glitzy brunette said. I believe he was extremely happy to have overcome that obstacle because, even in the last few years, he had been in and out of treatment for his addiction for decades, the author writes. He was trying to fight that, and he was relieved that he finally felt it was behind him. He refused to touch the drink menu during our lunch. He mentioned how much he's been enjoying pickleball and fitness, and he wants to introduce all of his buddies to it. I believe... He was sincerely committed to reinventing himself as a completely different person. He was a little afraid to order a Diet Coke, since that's caffeine, and it's something else that some people might find difficult, she continued. Eventually, though, he said, this is just a little treat for myself. I'm actually doing really well. Anything that would jeopardize his health worried him. He approached that matter with great seriousness. Introduced by a mutual acquaintance, Crosby first met the actor around the start of fall and claimed that their lunch together was the first they had ever had. She narrated how Perry had asked her to lunch to talk about her work and offered her advice on how to deal with celebrities. He also cautioned her about using painkillers before her impending wisdom tooth extraction, claiming that the medications were his entryway into addiction. 
That was the first lunch that I had with him, the woman stated. Although I had briefly spoken with him when we had previously met in person, that was actually our first lunch together. I didn't know him that well, and I was just getting to know him while we were at lunch, so it's just so crazy that he passed away the next day. He was really forthcoming with the questions I was asking about himself. He told me so many various things and was like an open book. I had the impression that I had known him for a very long time, and he truly made the whole experience wonderful. Oh, that's terrific, I thought. I can trust this individual, and they are a genuinely excellent person that I can have in my life. And the following day, he's gone. According to Crosby, she learned about Perry's passing from a news article and expressed her sadness that he was unable to carry out his objectives. He wanted to start his foundation to help people struggling with substance abuse, whether it be drug or alcohol addiction, the spokeswoman stated. In addition, he was very interested in having his life produced into a movie. His goal was to resume his acting career, and he intended for Zac Efron to play him. He also intended for him to make a brief appearance as a therapist or counsellor, sort of offering guidance to the actor portraying him. He knew exactly how he was going to take this situation, turn it into a story, and utilise storytelling as a tool to connect with others and make the most of his skills. I sincerely hope that people who were close to him, his peers, and the industry can make that happen.